Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be reviewing a rather well-known B-movie of the action variety. This movie has body cop action, murder, revenge, and lots and lots of tasteless nudity. Is this film even worthy of the B-movie title? Well, I guess we'll find out. Without further ado, on with the review. I've been aware of this movie for a long, long time. So long that I don't even remember where or when I first discovered it. It's always just been there in the back of my head like some kind of Voldemort Professor Quirrell moment or some kind of brain tumour. Whether this is actually a benefit to me or not is questionable, of course. I have seen several reviews of this movie. The earliest I remember watching is that by Fanboy Flicks, which I have linked in the description as I usually do. The opening credits have music that sounds like it belongs in Street Fighter or something. I'm here for it, I guess. The movie begins with a henchman, Okamura, having a meeting with another henchman. The second henchman, Yamashita, is played by Robert Zadar, a famous B-movie actor who suffered from cherubism. These guys are all members of a Yakuza group called the Katana Gang. They kill members of another group that they were doing dealings with under their boss Fujiyama's orders. We are then introduced to our heroes, police officers Frank Washington and Joe Marshall, the latter of which being the titular Samurai Cop. Now, after completing the original takes for the movie, Matt Hannon, Joe Marshall's actor, cut his hair as he didn't realise that they had to do retakes. To solve this, director and writer Amir Shivan got a very obvious and ugly wig for Hannon to wear. So, because of this, this hideous thing will be scattered inconsistently throughout the film, very apparently so when it makes an appearance as well. So, Joe and Frank are hunting down members of the Katana Gang, as their main operation is selling cocaine aside from murder. Makes sense, movie. You're on the right track realism-wise so far, even if your acting is a little flat. The cops try to follow the gang members as they try to transport drugs with this cheesy, weirdly upbeat music in the background. There's a shooting match during the pursuit, which causes Joe to accidentally run over a wounded Katana member. Hey man, those injuries don't look nearly as severe enough. His legs should be shredded. One of the other injured katana guys is set on fire, and the cops put him out like the honourable citizens they are, although he dies anyway. Not because of being burned, but because Fujiyama orders his death later on regardless. We get a gratuitous Hallmark movie like sex scene between Joe and a female co-worker, because they have to show that he's a real ladies man and all. Do I make you horny? Randy? Do I make you horny, baby? Yeah, do I? <laughs> we then get a bunch of exposition to beef up Joe's character, when the Katana gang have a meeting about him. His real name is Joe Marshall. They call him Samurai. He speaks fluent Japanese. Are you sure about that? Joe and Frank see the burned guy in hospital and speak to the nurse via the flattest dialogue known to man, which only proceeds to get worse as she and Joe begin the world's worst attempt at flirting since Darcy's proposal. Would you like to fuck me? Bingo. Our buddy cop duo get in trouble with their boss, so hashtag prank him by kissing him on his head, a gesture which is initially met with expected anger, but then he starts chuckling. Hey. 
Was he told to do this out of the blue? He doesn't seem prepared for this at all, and there's way too long of a wait which is making him harder to read. What does katana mean? It means Japanese sword. Joe confronts Fujiyama at a restaurant. Are you Fuj... Fujiyama? He speaks fluent Japanese. He gives some big speech about how selling drugs is bad, because he's a heroic cop and all. He also flirts with Fujiyama's girlfriend Jennifer at that too. I guess that's acceptable though, because Fujiyama is the main villain. The cops then talk to this waiter... valet guy? Whoever is playing him is making some very dubious acting choices. Who? Him! Who's him? Himself! Oh, he committed suicide. Yes! <laughs> There's a terrible fight outside with many cartoon sound effects accenting each hit, and this bozo loses his arm while doing the nice guy routine. Uncuff him! I'm in! Uncuff him! Ah! Ah! I made a meme about this a while ago, actually. Joe goes to visit Jennifer because he thinks she's pretty, and she explains that Fujiyama helped get her out of debt after her father died. He tries to convince her that Fujiyama is a bad guy and leaves, before being ambushed by a bunch of guys working for the Okamura guy from earlier. Joe chases one of the henchmen down, and gets him to snitch about who sent him. He and Frank organise an ambush at Okamura's house. Okamura and Joe have a martial arts battle to the death, and it's very clear that Matt Hannon is wearing his wig throughout most of this scene. Why did they just leave this in? At least retake just this shot or something. Anyways. Joe wins the fight because there are around 45 minutes left of this movie. Jennifer goes to Joe's house, which makes Joe even more of a target in Katana's eyes, and Yamashita and his goons start picking off his friends one by one, until he gets Joe's address, although Frank escapes without getting hurt. Frank and Joe's boss is forced into a position where the three men will have to turn in their badges after defeating the Katana gang and the two cops have one final battle with Fujiyama, after killing another group of his henchmen, although this time, he has Jennifer hostage. However, Joe is a man with a plan. He disarms himself, and Frank, who is shot, yet is actually wearing a bulletproof vest, shoots Fujiyama. Since this movie really doesn't want to give up, we have our final battle of killing bad guys in general, with just 10 minutes left to go. It's Yamashita vs Joe now in a katana showdown. Really living up to the name, hi huh, Yamashita. The battle is really drawn out and slow paced, and man that wig just looks horrific in this shot. Oh my god, what is that? It's really distracting at times and hasn't been doing this movie any favours. Again, Joe wins so Yamashita commits seppuku, and Joe goes to live happily ever after with Jennifer. You know, as much as I hate to say it, I kinda like this movie. It's just so awful. It has all the makings of a film that's just so unbelievably shit that it's extremely entertaining. This just comes across like it was made by someone who'd watched too many martial arts movies, yet was also a casual viewer of TMNT. I mean, you can tell the people involved were trying to do something, and clearly someone gave them the money to do so, but they just had no idea what they were doing. The monotonous line delivery, the badly written dialogue, the shaky plot which is mostly looped cheesy fight scenes and smut scenes. It's all there. Someone out there obviously agrees with me too as this movie now has a cult following, receiving a sequel in 2015 and a 2019 documentary about the making of it. Matt Hannon even did an interview with Red Letter Media about this movie in 2014. There's apparently a niche for rubbish like this and I love it. Well, that's all for this video. 
Don't forget to like and subscribe and to leave your thoughts in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching. Nothing like the polo to ease my mind With polos by my side, I'll always shine The blue and green ones are my favorite kind But I'll eat the colored ones from time to time Cause polos is life, polos is life, polos is life Polos is life, polos is life, polos is life, polos is life. Sleep all night and then polos is life